and welcome to the standpoint. You know, the standpoint is all about women. It's about, you know, celebrating women, supporting women, motivating women, empowering women, everything women and children and the youth. And when we talk about women, it's irrespective of your political, religious, um, social, ethnic, whatever background. Women, we all have one thing in, in common. Society is treating us the way it does just because we are women, not because we are Muslims or Christians or we are from the north or from the south or from the west or whatever. It's simply because we are women. But they found a nice way of segregating us too. Muslim women are this way. Christian women are this way. And women from the north are like that. Women from... But we will not allow that. Not this year. Not this year. Where our theme for the standpoint is women as achievers. Woman be an achiever and we are not leaving any woman behind. Today I have three powerful women in the studio. Two business women and one banker. They are all Muslims. They have different backgrounds, but they've come together and they are doing something great for themselves, for the community, and for the society, and for Ghana as a whole. The Muslim woman in business is our topic for discussion today. My name is Ohine Yuri Gifty Auntie. You can call me Hajia Ohine Yuri Gifty Auntie. Let me say thank you to GTP for my clothes. Ophelia Crossland designed so this dress for me. Kua Accessories gives me, uh, gives me these accessories. Earring, you know, my bracelets and then ring I love so much. Papa Cosmetics, always, always faithful with their makeup products. I've been using it for close to seven years now. And makeup and more applies their makeup for us. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll get talking about these three Muslim women from different backgrounds, but have a common, a common goal. We'll be back. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome back to the standpoint. If you just joined us today, we are celebrating three Muslim women from different backgrounds, but with a common goal to ensure that they help each other, to help their community, to help their society, to help this country called Ghana. And let me say thank you to our sponsors. You know, without them, we won't be on air. The African Women's Development Fund, AWDF, they've been supporting African women's rights organizations across Africa. Anointed Electrical Engineering Services, the generator expert, Tinated Herbal, producers of Tinated Tomake and Vernacare. Lip tomato paste, good tomato, good taste. And this cam is produced anti Mary baby gripe mixture and Nescoffer blood tonic. Woma Africa Limited manufacturers of Frito cooking oil and Fortune Rice, which comes in three flavors. Three. Green one is good for soft dishes like omutu and rice sota. Now, the orange one, also very, very good for wache. And then the wine one, which is good for jollof and fried rice and all the nchichi rices that you want to do. You know, that's the Thai rice. So when I talk about the colors, it's the packaging. Green, orange, and wine. Know the right one you buy for what dish you want to prepare. Now in the studio, I have three beautiful, powerful young women. Hajia Rashida Malik. She is the national president of the Criterion Ghana. Madam President, welcome to the standpoint. Thank you. She's also a businesswoman. Now... Next to her, I have Afisat Ali. She's also a member of the Criterion Ghana. She's also a businesswoman. Welcome, Rafis, uh, Afisa. Afisa. <laughs> <laughs> Next to Afisa, I have Khadija M. Subaru. Yes. She is also a member of the Criterion Ghana, and she is a banker. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Very Thank much. you. How are you? Okay. But. Um, Afisa and then Khadija help me say thank you to Madam President Rashida yeah okay. a year ago around this time the standpoint uh, the um, award and so reading project we set up a library at my husband's village it's Edumasa and she sent electrician to go and fetch she provided us with the light 
the electricals, everything at her cost. They went to fix everything there, and after now, everything is working. So say thank you to her. Thank you so much, my sister. Thank we you. are grateful. Yeah. Very, very grateful. At that time, I hadn't even met her. I only wow. knew her on Facebook. That's so like Rashida. <laughs> so like Rashida, eh? <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Okay, so, Khadija, you are a banker. Yeah. That's your professional background. That's it. Afisa, what is your background? Well, my, my background is marketing. Marketing. You yes. did marketing. Yes, I did so, marketing. And... I actually worked in a firm, um, in a corporate firm, and I was in charge of marketing, and I grew to, um, to the highest rank. Okay. Then I later used my qualifications to be an affiliate member of the Chartered Institute of Marketing UK. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> so <laughs> you went to the very top. Yes. So how come you you decided to go to the market now? Well. Um, it gets to a point, um, I grew up in a business background, so okay. whilst I was working, even on weekends, I go to the market. Okay. And I've always had the dream to own my own business. And so um, after I um, left the corporate world, mm -hmm. I told myself, okay, I've been able to acquire the skills to manage people. I have a marketing background and um, I've been able to get the skills um, you need, especially the accounting background to be able to manage a business. Okay. So what, let me start from there with my little capital. And that's how I started. Wow. But your mother was trading. Yes, my mother was trading. trading. But she made sure you went to school yes. to the highest level. The highest and this level. was, a, you grew up in a typical Muslim home. Exactly. Your mother was a Muslim, your father exactly. a Muslim exactly. as well. Awesome. Hi, dear Rashida. Yes. What's your background? Well, I have a background in IT. Um, I studied IT. I have um, a professional, it used to be IDPM, but now I am IS. Okay. I went up to the level of um, um, graduate diploma, mm -hmm. I, just like a degree, and that's, that's my background. So okay. I'm a programmer by profession. Programmer yes. by profession. Yes, system analyst, let me put it that way. And you are selling lights, electricals? On the market. On the market. Yes. Why? Well, it happened by default, just like Hafiza said. Um, my mother also is in trading. Okay. My father, an industrialist. Mm -hmm. So I fell into owning my own business by default. It wasn't something that I wanted to. Mm. I always wanted to be in the corporate world, but I realized it wasn't for me because I always wanted to be in charge. Right. And it wasn't working because sometimes you want to take charge of certain things and you don't have that position. Mm. So you can't. That's why I had to do something on my own. Mm. And are you happy? Yes, very. Doing what you're doing. Yes, because I, I take charge, mm. and that's more of me. I am somebody who will always wants to take charge, not domineering, but I want own to your space. Own my space. Right, yes. right. Yes. Afisa, what about you? You're happy. Yes, I doing? am. Happy. What What do you trade in? What do you sell? Well, I also sell um, electricals, but then my part is just the trunking, trunking okay. aspect, okay. and so I sell trunking, and I'm making it by God's grace. Which market? I'm also in, I'm at Opera Square. In Opera Africa. Square? Yes. You to Opera Square? Yes. Madam Banker, <laughs> yes. how's it like being a Muslim in a banker, in a banking environment? <laughs> yes, um, you know, I've had uh, some challenging times, let mm. me put it that way. Initially, when you go in, you have some managers who are very open-minded. They would mm -hmm. accept you as you are. And you have some, too, who don't understand why you should always have your scarf on. You know, so I had to battle with some, some managers right. to understand my point of view. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, they've come to accept that uh, that is who, you are. who I am. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. What matters most is your work. Mm -hmm. Do you produce results or not? Mm -hmm. And that's what we look at now. What about clients? Oh, clients are okay, mm -hmm. very open. Right. Yeah, and uh, I think it's been okay for okay. me. Yes. Though there are a few challenges, but in all, we can't, we can't complain much. You're watching The Standpoint. I'd like to say thank you to our supporters. Matamis gives us the port. Go God to your God. Thank you so much. I mean...
patronize it. Healthy, it's very good. And I keep saying it. As a woman, yogurt is very, very good for you. And every doctor will tell you that. I'll also like to say thank you to Auntie Vera of House of Foods. Thank you. Thank you to Cake Techniques. We are so grateful to you. And thank you to Yep Cleaning Services who support us. Make sure our environment is very clean. If you need any cleaning services, call on Yep Cleaning Services. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll continue with this interesting conversation. <laughs> Welcome back to The Standpoint, if you just joined us. Well, you've missed a bit, but hey, there's still more to come. We are talking about women, Muslim women in business. And um, there's a banker among them as well. I don't know, maybe I find, maybe she has some business on the side. You never know, you know, but at least they are together. They have a group that is making sure they work to support each other, to support their, their community, the society, and the nation. Remember, this program is also aired on ABN TV on Sky Channel 235, which is across Western Europe, parts of Canada, and Asia. Let me say thank you to GTP for my cloth. Ophelia Crossland Design Souls for me. And um, my accessories by Coa Design. Papa Cosmetics, always faithful. Makeup product from... Paba Cosmetics, everything makeup from Paba Cosmetics. And they are also at Laboni and East Legon. And also makeup and more put everything together to make me look nice. Now we are talking about Muslim women in business. And I have with me Hajia Rashida, Hajia Afisat, and um, Hajia Khadija. Corporate world, Hajia Rashida, how was it like for you? Well, I never had the opportunity to be in the corporate world. I, okay. Okay, so after studying, you just went After to... studying, I opened a business for myself. I worked for a while. Okay. Like one year. Oh, okay. And I realized it's not my style. Okay. Because I wanted, as I said earlier, I wanted to take charge and I wasn't getting the opportunity. Okay. So in, okay. in a few months, like after a year, I got married and mm. my husband didn't want me to work for anybody. Buddy, okay. So the first thing we, I did was to open an internet cafe because I had a background in IT. Right. So I opened an internet cafe. Okay. And it was doing well. And how come you moved on from the internet cafe to... I moved from the internet cafe because it got to a time when the smartphones started coming in, mm. the system. The internet cafe was not working anymore. It collapsed the business, it? collapsed the it? business. Yeah. So to, yeah. To, to be able to, you know, move, I had to move into something else. Right. And that's how I got myself into the electrical business. Electrical business. So, okay. How do you have you, what about you, the corporate world? Well, it got to a point, I'm the kind of person that um, I believe I'm a strong character. So everywhere I go, I usually climb through the ranks very fast. And being a Muslim, I had a little bit of challenge mm -hmm. in the sense that when um, people even come to the office and they see you, your name, usually, you, ah, um, are you a Muslim? I'm like, oh, yes, I'm a Muslim. Hey, so how come... You are able to get them say, oh, in life, it depends on the individual. You need to um, tune your mind and say, okay, I want to get to this level. Mm -hmm. So I have to work towards it. And that's what I have right. actually done. Right. And there were times too that when you go for meetings with some institutions and you get there, the, the first, usually the first that's, ah, so you're a Muslim. When they see you and you say, I'm a Muslim, I say, yes, I'm a Muslim. I'm a woman too. <laughs> Double trouble. <laughs> Double trouble. I'm a Muslim. I'm a Muslim. <laughs> I'm a woman too, so don't be surprised. We are here for business, so yeah. let's do business. 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 So I was, I knew the guys that I usually work with. They felt intimidated. Right. They right. felt intimidated. Right. Okay. So all of you are strong characters. Yes. And you kind of knew what to expect, so you were prepared for it. It's is that uh, Khadija? Is that it? it is you, you, do, you knew that going into banking wasn't going to be easy for you. So you were prepared been, for it? It hasn't been. Yeah. And I had to prepare my mind. And like I said, I have a vision. So I just told myself I have to try and make it. Besides, we don't have so many Muslim ladies, you know, being in that sector because of the restrictions. I mean, in certain banks, even the way you have to dress goes totally against... against our religion mm. so it's it's a very big challenge but I felt that um, 
finding myself where I am. I made everybody understand where I was coming from. And so what I had to do, I do it. And what is not really what my religion wants, I find a different way of doing it, which is acceptable to my company. You know, prayer times is a problem, you know, where you have to go meet uh, customers, you have to do things, and here you have, you have to pray Asher, you have to pray Zohar. Before, sometimes you have to pray Maghreb before you go home. How do you do this? And if you have a, a, a boss who doesn't understand your religion, how do you explain to him? Okay. You know, these are all the challenges. He can even but use that as an excuse to... Of course, definitely. Exactly. Because it's, it's, it's as if you always want to have your own rule. They have their rules. You have to follow it. But you want to tell us what to do. Mm -hmm. Who is employing who? Mm -hmm. You know, it's been a big challenge. But I, f I feel where I am finding myself there up till now, there's, there must be a reason why I am still mm -hmm. there. And being... Coming from the background that I'm coming from, you know, we don't have a lot of Muslim ladies in such sector. Yeah, and, so you're, uh, you're so determined I to think, make an impact? Yes, I have to rise president. and then make an impact and try to, you know, make others see that it's not really a wrong choice, it's not a wrong place. Uh, one could make good impact on your community being in such a, mm. a, a yeah. sector. So, yeah. yeah, I'm just trying to make the best out of it. Yeah. Awesome. So, ma the market that. Mm, still, I'm still looking at your dress. <laughs> we'll talk about it. Madam Marketer, yes. you went as high, you joined the UK marketing. <laughs> After all that, you ended up at the market to sell. Yes. What do your colleagues say? When people, I mean, heard you say that you're going to sell at the market, what did they say? You should see, you know the look on my face. <laughs> yeah. What did they say? You're going to sell yeah. on the market. Well, um, for now, I'll say... Most of them see me and they are proud of me because mm -hmm. I realized when you chat with the, the women that I've worked with, they also want to be in the same situation because usually some of them are married, they would want to, um, they, they have kids, they would want to have their own time and do other things. But in these days, you know, everybody wants an income. Yeah. And it's not everybody that has, a business is about risk. Mm -hmm. Moving out of working for someone and mm -hmm. going to start something is a yeah. big risk. That one, you know that at least every month you get some something. salary. You exactly. get some money coming in. So when you come and you take um, your risk very well, you are able to make it. People see you and they are happy. They are, they are impressed. So what did you do? They ask questions. You would need to motivate them. You would need to explain to them why um, you are now doing well mm -hmm. and give them some advice. Mm -hmm. Though some of them I realized that most women are afraid to get out of their comfort, comfort zone. zone. But, but what about your family? Anyway, you said they, they come from a market, I mean, well, a trading background. So a they're trading not background, but from the kind of family that I come from, to be frank with you, my mom knew I was doing so well. Every, so she's not happy. Okay. She's not happy I'm out of the corporate, corporate world. world. Okay. <laughs> she's not happy. She wants, she, I realized that she, she just enjoyed me, seeing me go on track. Today you are here. Today you are going to work. You are in suits. She's she's that. <laughs> she laughed that so much. How did, How did you fit in? How long have you been at Okanshi? Hey, is it Okanshi? Oprah. Oprah Square. How, uh, how long have you been I've there? I've been there for the past um, nine years. Nine years. Yes. Market. Yes. How did you fit in? Well, in that sector, it's more of it's more of a male-dominated sector. And fitting in was a bit challenging because mm -hmm. though there are a few women, mm -hmm. they, they are not as vibrant as I am. Mm -hmm. Now, I deal more with engineers. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to understand what they want. Mm -hmm. Though I'm not an engineer, I relate so well with them. I learn from them. And when I'm going to buy things from them from outside, I'm able to get exactly what they want. While well, you're watching the standpoint, the standpoint is sponsored by Anointed Electrical Engineering Services, the generator expert. We are also sponsored by African Women's Development Fund, Tinnated Herbal, Lip Tomato Paste, Wilma Africa. Wilma Africa, they manufacture Frito cooking oil and, of course, Fortune Rice, which comes in three flavors. The green package one, which is good for Mutuo rice water. The orange one, which is very good for wache, and then the, or the wine one, which is good for jollof and fried rice. NSKM is producers of Auntie Mary baby gripe mixture and next 
Kofa Black Tonic. We take a break when we come back. We'll definitely continue this interesting conversation. <laughs> Welcome back. You know, I get so excited when I find out things about people I think I know on set, you know. I mean, it's amazing. It motivates you as a presenter. It encourages you. And I'm always, always, you know, empowered by that. And to think that a certain woman had to give me pressure to do this program, not knowing I rather need this program. Interesting times. Well, you can also watch The Standpoint on our website, www.thestandpoint.com.gh. It's powered by Dream Oval. And remember, the Girl in Need Foundation is still ongoing. All ADB branches across the country, we have our boxes there. Please go in there. Put your one Ghana city or more. Or call us and uh, support girls in need to go to school so we can be proud of them. From what we are learning, education is powerful. And once you get the education, wherever you want to branch into, you will succeed. Now, my sister, president of what? Criterion. Criterion yes. What's that about? Well, the Criterion Ghana is um, a basically woman um, society, mm -hmm. which started in Nigeria. I okay. happened to find myself in Nigeria in 2015. Okay. And um, I had the opportunity to go to one of their meetings. And I saw Muslim women who were doing well in their <laughs> sectors. Don't mess. I was in Nigeria 2012. I checked. Yes. The Professors. chief doctor, chief doctor, <laughs> professor. Yes. Exactly. And what I saw was amazing. I saw Muslim women in medicine, Muslim women in, in you know academia and it was so fascinating so i spoke to their national army and i told them wow i'm impressed i would want to do something like this in ghana because i have found myself in the bank at times mm -hmm. to you know fill a, a form to withdraw money or something and they asked me if i could write mm -hmm. it, it 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 was so irritating, irritating. thank I, you i just couldn't stand it yeah and i would want to make the impact i would want to Create, I mean, make a group of women in the professions and the business so that we come together and show other Muslim women or better still, people out there that Muslim women can do well wherever they find themselves. themselves. Wow, that's interesting. So, Afisa, what, what do you do once you are together? How many are you now? Well, um, a membership of about 40 40 now. Yes. So what do you do? What's it? Is it just to encourage each other or just to showcase that you have well, um, from professionals? Well, from the background that we come from, um, usually um, we, um, our parents give us the hybrid system. From Monday to Friday, you go to the normal school mm -hmm. and weekends, you usually go to the Islamic schools. Okay. And usually the, in the macro that we, the macro setting that we um, went to, it's difficult to even ask your your Islamic teacher, what is teaching you? The understanding that you don't, sometimes you are able to read the Quran fully, but you don't even understand what you are reading. But in this group, when you join, you have to read the meaning. Yeah. And as time goes on, we have to, um, we call something hips, you have to um, what, what do you memorize, memorize the, some of the verses that would also help you in your general, like in your life. Mm. So um, after we started reading, I realized that. Mm, Sometimes this imam said this, so, so mm -hmm. I, well, this is what he said, this is what he means. So we want a station whereby we get to a point when they are preaching, you know what they are preaching. So it empowers you. Yes. And sometimes I realized that God gave, when I started reading, God gave women so much power. I tell you. So much power. And some of the things they This is the same Quran that says, that heaven lies at the feet of your mind. Exactly. God gave us so much power. And some of the things, that, I mean, they totally interpret, misinterpret for us. And when you read, you realize that, mm, okay, so this is what God says. This is what God says. There are certain things that we even do, even as women, we do that are wrong. Mm -hmm. But when you read, you realize that, okay, this is the right way it, to, to go it. about it. So we encourage them to read and understand sure. and share. And so when you are able to do all that, you realize that, okay, my lifestyle is even changing. Mm -hmm. 
everything is in the Quran. Quran. So what we are trying to do is to encourage ourselves, try to study and understand what we are doing. And once we are able to understand what we are doing, we can impact our families, immediate families, um, positively. And then the wider society, uh, because gradually we want to get to a stage or a point whereby we can go to schools and speak to girls or Muslim um, girls mm -hmm. about the religion, what it says, the part, the, 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 the rights that God has given us as, as women. women, you know. It's very, very important that we, we realize that we are actually very important or vital people mm -hmm. in society everywhere. Haji Rashida, do you also um, discuss general topics like what is happening in our society now? Yes, we do. We talk, talk about, about reproductive health. Mm. We talk about um, uh, maternal immortality. Mm. We talk about... Um, girl, female genital mutilation, mutilation yeah. and related. Some of these things are not in the tenets of Islam. Mm. It's just something that somebody has, you know, been able to, you know, um, yeah. cover and then he's selling his maybe product, let me say. Yeah. Because it's not something that it's in Islam. Yeah. People do it. So we learn it, we learn these things and then we teach each other so mm -hmm. that you can also tell somebody yeah. else and, and then make that impact. For, stand up for, for these things. Other. We do. Okay. We do. In conclusion, how do you have a Anyway, how many kids do you have? I have two boys. Two boys. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so just, <laughs> so just for you. <laughs> That's good. Okay, so with everything that you're doing, being part of this, the experiences that you have, what kind of impact do you hope to make? Especially uh, on the younger generation of Muslims. You are young though, but yeah. younger, yeah. yeah. Well, um, like I earlier on, said what we we want to do or our long-term vision is to encourage young ladies or muslims in general to try to study the quran very well mm -hmm. understand what it says and i think the genesis of most of our problems is just because we don't understand exactly what the religion is saying and so we don't practice it well so try to get to practice or uh, understand what our religion says. And then I think life would be easier for mm -hmm. all of yeah. us. Because yeah. interestingly, when I met the um, chief imam, you know, last year, just around this time, interestingly, uh, just around this time, and he, he, he made a comment to me that, you know, in Islam, knowledge. It's very key. It's key. Yeah. All other things as He said knowledge is the... Knowledge in, ter and in terms of education is the most powerful yeah, tool. tool or asset that you can have. Yeah. All other things are sub-sectors, you yes. know, are, are, are secondary, secondary to that. But before I met him and he told me this, yeah. I had been given the impression that, you know, I don't even want to say it, especially <laughs> concerning him. And I was amazed. I was humbled. Well, before I continue preaching, you have to say, you please your concluding words. Yes, um, I would want a situation whereby I would, the, my impact would be to see strong Muslim business women. Because growing up, I realized that they are so much into retail. When somebody, no one is coming, they will just be sitting there, maybe watching a telenovela. I would want to see them um, getting out of their comfort zone. Being proactive. Proactive. Getting out of their comfort zone. Okay. If um, I've been, even, even if I've been to school, maybe I can write a, bit, a business plan, send it to corporate organizations. If I even sell my Inkatie, how do I rebound my Inkatie and send it to these companies whereby they would sell, I would, they would be, uh, I would be able to sell it, it to, to them. them. I would want a situation whereby I'll see Muslim businesswomen coming on TV to share their experiences and all that. Mm. Yes. Okay. You have a big... <laughs> in fact, both of you have big dreams, <laughs> but nothing is impossible. Yes. Yeah, you have been able to make it, so others can make it as well. My sister. Well, um, for me, I like I, I relate to people so well. So for now, I'm being trained as a lay counselor. Okay. I I want to encourage young Muslim women mm. to stand up for themselves, mm. so that they will not be marginalized wherever they go. Right. I have traveled out on business 
And then uh, the, the, my supplier asked me, Rashida, why? Muslim woman traveling. Your husband didn't say anything. I said, well, that's me. I have to let him know who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that means I should disrespect him. No. But then he should know that I have to do what you I... have a dream. I have, have a, dream. a vision. And I have, have to follow that dream. Most Muslim women are laid back. They don't have the encouragement. They don't have the kind of motivation to, you know, do what they really want to do mm -hmm. because some man out there is, you know, sabotaging mm -hmm. or pressing them not to. Mm -hmm. Oh, they will so, tell you that you won't get a husband yes, if you, yes, you know. Yes, okay. yes, Afisa, are you married? No, I'm not. Didn't they tell you if you behave like <laughs> your sister, you won't get... <laughs> but meanwhile, your sister is married. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm, 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 I'm trying to learn how to, you know, counsel young Muslim women to mm -hmm. stand up for what they really, really, really want to be. Really. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been very enlightening, you know. Trust me, I didn't expect the program to go this way. <laughs> it's taking a whole, you know, very powerful and interesting thing, and I'm sure we'll do this again okay. very soon. Thank you so much for coming. Well, we'll take a break. When we come back, I'll give you a bit of me. You know, every now and then, as a presenter, sometimes I think I know it all. I've heard it all, but... I get to hear people's stories and experiences and I get amazed. I get amazed. I don't think it's just for anything that God gave me the theme for this year. Woman be an achiever. There's nothing that we put our minds to that we cannot achieve as women. And when I talk about woman as an achiever, I'm not talking about money. No, being able to do something you put your mind to and making a difference standing out wherever you are adding value to yourself going the extra mile to uh, to 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 really blow the minds of people people underestimate you but when you open your mouth when you start chatting with them when you start sharing ideas and knowledge with them they get amazed just as my mind has been blown i mean today that is what we want for women it's not just about the appearance, beautiful face, beautiful body, nice dress, high heels, makeup. No. What is here? What is here? What is in your head, your brain, your intelligence? What is in your heart, your passion, your compassion? We can be achievers. We can do it. We can, nothing is impossible. It won't be easy. Nothing good comes easy. Actually, nothing bad even also comes easy. So why don't we choose the good way? Struggle through. Go through the challenges. Jump over the hurdles. Stumble and fall. And at the end of the day, we sit back. And we look at our life and say that, yes, it hasn't been easy. But God has been good. It hasn't been easy, but I am here. It hasn't been easy, but I've made an impact. It hasn't been easy, but I, I achieved my dream. My name is Ohine Yue Gifty Auntie. As always, I have super crazy faith in God. And I'm here. And I can talk this plenty. Not because I did anything right. Not because I've had life easy. Not because I have it all going well for me now. It is just by grace. You can do it too. Thanks for watching. See you same time next week. Bye for now. Thank you.